Hello! So today I'm going to be talking about Night Film by Marisha Pessel. I was drawn towards this novel because it's been a while since I have read a detective style thriller. And this book also has horror-ish elements which felt fitting with the Halloween season. And I've also always been fascinated with books that talk about films and filmmakers and the filmmaking process and all those things combined, yeah, made me pick this one off the shelf. This book has been on my shelf for a very, very long time. I found it at a charity shop for around 50p and it does take up quite a lot of space so I'm glad to have ticked it off the list. So what's it about? The story revolves around an investigative journalist named Scott McGrath. Scott becomes absolutely obsessed with the reclusive and enigmatic director Stanislas Cordova. The cause of his obsession is the mysterious death of Cordova's daughter, Ashley. The novel unfolds as a journey into the dark and shadowy world of Cordova's films and his life as Scott dives deeper and deeper into the mysteries surrounding Ashley's death. Purcell uses a variety of multimedia elements throughout this novel, photographs, web pages, documents, in order to enhance the narrative and kind of immerse the reader. Personally, it felt a little tacked on and quite gimmicky. It's a novel that has all the trappings of your typical mystery thriller, with a few light horror-ish elements thrown in. As within all stories like this, Scott is a bit of a lone wolf. He lives on the edge, he likes to go things alone, but of course he can't do this alone, so he does end up making friends. At the start, he is resistant to these friendships, but then he grows to love them. He starts to appreciate having them by his side. But can he trust them? Can he trust anyone? And now throw in some twists and various location changes, and that's this book. So what did I like, and what didn't I like? What I liked, I really enjoyed the moments that dive into Cordova's films, that what went into making those films, the details of each individual film, and how those films relate to the overall narrative. I like the mystery surrounding those films, and also Cordova himself, the mysteries around his process as a director, I found it all very intriguing. But I'm afraid to say that is it for my likes. In this near 600 page book, that is the only element I enjoyed. So what didn't I like? The plot by no means justifies the book's length. The book did not need to be this long at all. Most of the characters felt like stereotypes of the detective noir genre, completely surface level and utterly one dimensional. Zero, and I mean zero depth. I just didn't care about any of the characters at all in this novel. The novel is also quite unfocused and wandery in all the worst ways. Light spoiler alert everybody, so if you don't want to hear what I'm about to say, please skip on 20 seconds. So I'm going to give you a little example of one weird thing I found in this novel that just made no sense. And yet again, it just goes down with how sort of unfocused this book is. But Scott has a daughter. Um, him and his wife are divorced and he has like custody of her on the weekends. He can be a bit distant from his daughter, constantly being pulled from one clue to the next, but he does love her and the novel makes that very, very clear. However, at one point in the novel, his wife says to him she is taking sole custody because of something that happened while he was watching her. And rather than being resistant, rather than trying to fight it, he literally just goes, yeah, all right. Yeah, that's fine. And I just think that's a load of horse shit. I don't think that a father who loves his daughter through an accident that was not his fault would just go, yeah, you take it. That's fine. I'll never, ever see my daughter again. That's absolutely fine. I just, I found it utterly bizarre. I have no idea what Pelsey was thinking. What? What? No dad would do that. No dad would do that. Horseshit. Back onto the things I disliked, all the side characters seem to just pop up and they seem to give just enough narrative to keep things moving. And quite a lot of those encounters are very fortuitous. There were a couple of moments when the writing found its stride, but overall it was quite unbalanced and very pedestrian. And there is absolutely nothing wrong with pedestrian writing when it's in a novel that has a focused, tight and controlled plot, but this, unfortunately, has none of those. Also, some of the dialogue is just laugh out loud funny, but not in a good way. So that's it for my dislikes, but here's another kind of good thing, I suppose. I don't think I was ever actually bored whilst reading this book. And for a book that's 600 pages long, that must mean that Pelsey is doing something right. But I think I wasn't bored because I just came to accept that this is a bad book. And if I'm going to make my way through it, I should embrace the cliches, the cheesy dialogue and the one dimensional characters. And with all that being said, I think there are a lot of people out there who will really enjoy this book because it's not that taxing a read. It does go on a proper adventure. There are twists and turns. And as said, it has horror-ish elements and all those film moments kind of make it all intriguing. And then you've got the kind of multimedia stuff happening throughout with the newspaper articles, the photographs, the web pages and all that kind of stuff. 
I think there's a lot in here for thriller or mystery readers to enjoy. However, I don't know, this seems like the kind of book that I would have really, really enjoyed in my very early 20s or sort of in my late teens, whereas where I'm at right now, yeah, it just doesn't do much for me. So I'm afraid to say that I'm going to have to say it does not get a recommendation from me. I am going to give this book one star out of five. Have you read Night Film? And if so, what did you think about it? Did you love it? Did you hate it? Please let me know in the comments below. Before I sign things off, I want to give a little shout out to The Mystery Bookcase. I was recently sent a gift by a very close friend of mine and I was just blown away by the time and care that had been taken into the presentation of this gift. I of course had no idea what the book was going to be and nor the person sending it did they have any idea what the book was going to be but I'm very pleased to say that it's a book I didn't have and they absolutely nailed it because it was one I was really excited to read. This video hasn't been sponsored by them in any way I honestly was just genuinely impressed and I think if you're based in the UK it would make a very lovely Christmas present so the link will be in the description box in case you want to check it out. So as always everyone I want to thank you so much for watching I hope you are well and I hope you're enjoying whatever you might be reading and I'll see you all on the next one. Bye.